Welcome back students. Today we start with lesson 6 rocks. Let us understand what is a rock. A rock can be defined as an aggregate of minerals that form more or less a definite unit of the earth's crust. The term rock refers not only to any hard solid matter like granite but also to soft and loose particles like sand, silt and clay derived from the earth. The earth's crust is made up of various types of rocks that differ from one another in texture, structure, color, permeability, mode of occurrence and the degree of resistance to denudation. Here permeability means whether any fluid like water can flow through a rock. If it can flow through a rock then the rock is permeable otherwise the rock is impermeable. And resistance to denudation means how fast weathering occurs on that rock. Because some rocks are soft, so breaking down of these rocks takes place sooner as compared to harder rocks which take a lot of time to break down. Two or more minerals are usually mixed together to form a rock. Minerals are naturally occurring solid inorganic substances that have their definite chemical composition and physical properties. The most abundant mineral elements of the earth as a whole are iron, silicon, magnesium, nickel, sulfur and calcium. Whereas the most abundant mineral elements of the crust are oxygen, silicon, aluminium, iron, magnesium, calcium, potassium and sodium. Now let us understand the differences between rocks and minerals. Minerals are inorganic substances that occur naturally but rocks are solid substances which are a mixture of two or more minerals. Minerals have a definite chemical composition, but a rock has no definite chemical composition. The four chief mineral groups are silicates, carbonates, sulfides and metallic minerals. The three chief types of rocks are igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. Some examples of minerals are iron, nickel, silicon, calcium, potassium, sodium, etc. And some examples of rocks are basalt, granite, sandstone, marble, etc. Rocks are classified in several ways, but important classification is done on the basis of their origin. The three main types of rocks based on origin are igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. We start with igneous rocks. The word igneous is derived from the Latin word ignis, meaning fire. These rocks were formed due to cooling, solidification and crystallization of hot molten material of the earth known as magma found at great depths in the interior of the earth. So as you can see, here is the hot molten material called magma. As long as the material is inside the earth, it is called magma. But when this hot molten material comes out through the vent and spreads on the earth's surface, it is called lava. So inside the earth, magma cools and solidifies and turns into rock. And outside on the surface of the earth, lava cools and solidifies and forms rocks. Since the igneous rocks were first to be formed, they are called primary rocks. They form the basis for the formation of other types of rocks. Now we will study the characteristics of igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are hard and compact. They are formed by solidification of molten magma. They are granular and crystalline. 
they are either fine grained smooth and compact or may have large crystals with coarse texture the size of the crystals depends upon the rate of cooling of the molten material if the molten material cools very rapidly then the crystals formed in the igneous rock will be small but if the rate of cooling of the molten material is very slow then the crystals which are formed in the igneous rock will be large igneous rocks are less affected by chemical weathering because water does not percolate in these rocks most of them consist of silicates igneous rocks do not have layers they are generally weathered by mechanical weathering by agents such as temperature frost action and winds igneous rocks are associated with volcanic activity and are found mostly in volcanic regions our next topic is types of igneous rocks based on their origin the igneous rocks are classified into two types extrusive igneous rocks and intrusive igneous rocks extrusive igneous rocks are formed by the cooling of molten magma on the earth's surface the magma which is brought to the surface through fissures fissures here refers to long deep opening in the earth or volcanic eruptions solidifies to form rocks hence such rocks are smooth crystalline and fine grained they are also called volcanic rocks basalt is a common extrusive igneous rock and forms lava flows these are lava flows lava sheets and lava plateaus some kinds of basalt solidify to form long polygonal columns for example the giant causeway in northern ireland the giant causeway is an unusual formation that was born during volcanic eruptions 50 to 60 million years ago when northern ireland was subjected to powerful volcanic activity during this eruption molten basalt came into contact with chalk beds forming a lava plateau when the lava cooled quickly the plateau contracted and fractured very similar to drying mud forming 40000 columns of varying heights that look like giant stepping stones the largest column is almost 39 feet tall here is a fun fact The story behind this name the giant's causeway is that the Irish giant Finn MacCool of Gaelic mythology was challenged to a fight by the Scottish giant Benan Donner Finn accepted the challenge and built a causeway a causeway is a raised road across a wet area he built it across the north channel so that the two giants could meet so this is scotland this is ireland and here is the north channel so according to mythology finn built a causeway across the north channel now we come to intrusive igneous rocks when the magma solidifies within the earth's crust it cools slowly forming coarse textured hard rocks with large crystals for example granite capro dolomite many other types of intrusive rocks are also formed the first among those are batholiths batholiths are very large intrusions of magma that has cooled deep inside the earth's crust the batholith gets exposed to the earth's surface due to erosion helped by continental uplift acting over 
hundreds of millions of years. An exposed surface of a continuous plutonic rock is a batholith if it covers at least 100 square kilometers. A plutonic rock is an igneous rock that has solidified from molten magma at great depth inside the earth. Batholiths are usually dome shaped, as you can see in this picture, it's dome shaped. With no definite floor and they form the core of mountain ranges. They are chiefly composed of granite. The word bathos means depth. Here you have an example of the Sierra Nevada batholith. It is a large batholith which forms the core of the Sierra Nevada mountain range in California, exposed at the surface as granite. Lacoliths are formed when the magma does not reach the surface of the earth it solidifies below the crust. A thin sheet of magma collects between horizontal layers of sedimentary rocks. Either because the arriving amount of magma was much greater or the structural condition of the host rock was such that the magma could not spread horizontally. So the magma pushes against the upper layer of horizontal rocks resulting in a dome-like structure with a flat bottom. Here you have an example of a lacolith. This is the Montana lacolith. You can see the dome shape. The Montana lacolith in the United States, which has been exposed on the Earth's surface. Sometimes, Magma flows between layers of rocks horizontally, as you can see here. It cools and hardens there. This layer of intrusive rock is called a sill. For example, in this picture, you can see this is a sill. It has cooled and hardened horizontally between layers of rocks. Sometimes, when the magma is forced upwards, it fills vertical cracks or fissures in the existing rocks and it hardens there to form dikes. So here you can see an example of a dike. Similarly, here also you can see example of a dike. Now we come to volcanic neck. A volcanic neck is an igneous mass which seals up the vent of an ancient volcano. A vent is an opening in the earth's crust from which hot molten rock and volcanic gases escape into the atmosphere. So a volcanic neck forms inside a volcano when the heat and pressure from below are reduced. So because of reduction in the heat and pressure, the magma does not rise up, but solidifies inside the volcanic vent. Over a period of a few hundred thousand years, the surrounding softer rock erodes away, leaving the volcanic neck standing alone. Here also we have a picture of a volcanic neck. The surrounding softer rock has all eroded away and the volcanic neck is just standing alone. Here again is a picture of a volcanic neck. Now let us understand what are plutonic rocks. Plutonic rocks are intrusive igneous rocks which form at great depths because of slow cooling of magma. This leads to the formation of crystals of large size. The term originated from Pluto, the Roman god of wealth and the underworld. The underworld is a mythical abode of the dead, imagined as being under the earth. It could also refer to precious metals like gold and silver, which are found in plutonic rocks. Some examples of plutonic rocks are granite, Gabbro. And then we have hyperbyssal rocks. 
when magma cools at intermediate depth intermediate depth means neither at a very shallow depth and nor very deep inside the earth so when magma cools at intermediate depth and forms minor rocks like sills and dikes it is called hyperbasal rock now we will see the classification of igneous rocks on the basis of their chemical composition so first we have acid igneous rocks these rocks have a silica content between 65 to 85 percent they generally lack in iron and magnesium they are less dense and light in color granite is an example of acid igneous rocks then we have basic igneous rocks these rocks have less percentage of silica and high percentage of iron and magnesium they are denser and dark colored basalt dolerite and gabbro are examples of basic igneous rocks igneous rocks are generally compact and do not get eroded rapidly therefore these rocks make good building materials and are of great interest to builders and sculptors i conclude my lecture here in today's lecture i discussed the meaning of rocks the differences between rocks and minerals igneous rocks their formation their characteristics and the different types of igneous rocks thank you and have a nice day